Okay, buddy, um, I'm doing this at night <laughs> at home, and I don't have the same set that you have. Um, so I'm trying to look through the what I have here at the house, um, and I only have one sort of limited set. So I'm trying to find colors that are close to what you have in the set of 12 that I sent home. Um, started to do it with a pink and then realized you probably don't have pink in that set. You can make it with some white and red, obviously, but um, in any case, uh, you can see here, I'm starting with white. Um, I'm really trying to pull out the light. Uh, whenever you work with chalk pastels, just like with oil pastels, start with the light stuff first. You can always make things darker, but once you've made it too dark, it's super hard to make it much lighter. So I'm really trying to go through and kind of just hit all of those places that have some light to them. All right, so now I've got to start thinking about shadows. Um, I don't have a true purple. This is kind of a blue purple that I'm going to use in here. I'll probably add a little bit of red to it because I kind of want it a little bit more purple than this is. Um, but anyway, I'm, I'm going to use it up here and start to add a few shadows. Um, and I am putting this in like my darkest of my dark areas. I uh, really want to think about that painting in layers. What you put underneath will always affect the top. So if you want to have it pasteled a little, put a little lighter color under it. You want it to be rich and dark, use that darker undertone for it. Um, and this is Fauvism, so I decided to sort of play with some pinks and purples and blues um, in this guy because he looks a little bit sad. As I start to build up my layers, I do start blending a little at a time. Um, the key to this is to remember that you are going to carry this chalk with you and those colors are going to start building up on your fingers. You're going to pull them in other places. Periodically, when I start working on something and actually start blending, I'll go wash my hands off. Um, also, sometimes this stuff is not great some of the stuff in chalks. I mean, honestly, I've been doing it my whole life. They're supposed to be non-toxic, but there are still some toxic things in some of the chalks. Uh, some people prefer to wear like a latex glove or something like that on their hands um, to do uh, chalks with. But I didn't have one last night, so I didn't worry about it. Um, but just so you know, um, and you can see here I'm adding some red, um, and because I have the white and the blue in there, it's kind of looking purpley, um, pinky purple. Uh, you want to set that eye socket and then go back in and work some of those wrinkles back into it.
Okay, so even though I tell you, you know, work your other colors first, sometimes you need black, you know, or you need brown. You need those darker colors. Um, I had a professor would never let you use black. I don't necessarily agree with that point of view. Um, but I do tell you, use it last in the area. So now that I've kind of established his lights and his darks, now I'm going to start increasing the value. And I'm using a black, um, some browns, uh, that dark blue, maybe adding a little bit of the red, um, trying to get into the range that I'm looking for to set this eye socket area and some of these wrinkles. The key to things like these fine lines is you get the underlayers blended and then as you put those lines in, you know, they look kind of unblended and, it, you know, you want to go blend them. You got to blend only one time, one light, fast stroke going the direction of the line. Don't go back and forth. Don't grind it in. Try to use a light touch and it'll soften it enough, but you'll still keep that fine line and that contrast. 